Cool. Hello and welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Kratke, and I'm very excited today to host this webinar that will cover new trends um, in the accounting industry. And um, I'm very excited to have uh, with me today Steve Wallman, a director from William Stanley, a supernotive uh, accounting firm which has offices, uh, multiple offices in the UK and also um, in the United States. And without further ado, welcome, Steve. Um, do you want to give us a little bit of an introduction about yourself and your organization? Excellent. Certainly will do. Thank you, Martin, for the invite. It's a pleasure to be, be with you today. Um, I'm Steve Warman. I'm here as um, a consultant finance director for William Stanley & Co., um, primarily as Martin said, a UK-based accounting firm. We specialise and focus um, quite heavily towards the hospitality industry here within the UK, but um, as an expanding business, we're now moving towards uh, just opening our new office in um, New York and also supporting clients as they um, grow worldwide. And you know, we've got clients who are opening in the Middle East and you know, other countries around the world. So um, as Martin said, you know, we're about 500 plus cl clients at the moment and um, very much uh, active and expanding in our area and um, enjoying um, some, um, some good client growth. Well, no, thank you very much, Steve. Um, your, your, your industry used to be pretty, um, let's say it wasn't, it wasn't known to be uh, you know, one of the most uh, changing and innovative, uh, but um, this, this definitely has changed uh, in recent times where uh, you know, the, there's new opportunities through technology and other areas. Can you tell us a little bit about the trends that you see, what, what's, uh, what's happening at the moment uh, in the accounting industry? How are you incorporating new ways in, in your service offering? Absolutely. I mean, um, it sounds, um, sounds quite obvious, but um, we're finding, particularly with our clients, that even small businesses, when they start out, are much more open and much more using kind of the new wave of apps and services that are entirely cloud-based and, you know, very much moving away from perhaps the historic, historic version of where solutions were sold with kind of proprietary hardware. Um, and, you know, a lot of these systems, whether they be, kind of um, accounting systems or you know, kind of supporting um, apps with kind of payroll, HR, um, uh, even payment apps. It very much seems that the developers are very much focused more towards or starting with, I should say, the user interface side of things. And actually, you know, starting from a user's um, impression first to make their apps work very, very easily for um, for the end user, rather than um, you know challenging some of perhaps some of the uh, existing operators within the sector who maybe have some more historic or legacy structures and operations, and they're now um, you know racing to catch up and kind of overlay you know, um, a, a nice user interface onto perhaps some technology and processes that are well established, but, you know, might be on previous iterations of technology. Thanks, Steve. So, so you said, you know, it's not very common that, that um, your clients, um, you know, they're, they're using multiple um, cloud applications um, I guess they have now way more data um, uh, available for usage. Um, how does this uh, affect what, what you're doing um, to, to help them manage this data in a, in a better way? 
Yeah, I mean, one of the big challenges the um, I think a lot of our clients initially face, you know, even before they become our clients, are that you know, many of them will use the kind of the leading software accounting software packages on the market at the moment, which you know are exceptionally brilliant at handling the accounting side of things. The one element where um, there's real opportunity is around reporting. You tend to find that many, many clients come on board where their entire financial reporting is spreadsheet exports out of um, you know, whichever accounting system they're using. And of course, as they grow, once they start increasing the number and complexity of those spreadsheets, you get the classic um, issues with kind of presentation styles and also fidelity issues. You know, it's very easy for clients to uh, run a report for the wrong period or to accidentally delete a key figure on a spreadsheet and perhaps not pick that up until um, until it's too late. So, um, you know, that's one of the kind of um, uh, key opportunities we have. The other one that we find is, as you kind of mentioned there, often the clients, when we, when they arrive, they have some very, very good systems, but they're all disconnected. And then you have a similar issue of having either the same data or very similar data replicated in two different places um, which, if it's maintained perfectly in separate, those separate places, isn't an issue. But as we all know, what tends to happen is things will creep into one side that perhaps don't appear on the other in the other system. And um, yeah, and then that's where you know the real kind of reconciliation challenges come in. Cool. Thank, thank you, Steve. You've recently embarked on, on moving a quite substantial portion of your customers to the Acaris platform where you automatically connect to a variety of, of source systems, accounting, but, but, but also other ones. And then you're providing them with, with interactive uh, reports and, and, and dashboards. Can you tell us a little bit more about this process and what, what your uh, thoughts were and the objectives um, of, of, of that um, uh, project? Yes, of course. I mean, one of the things that we found is taking a very similar approach in starting with the end in mind and looking at the outputs required and desired by our clients. It's allowed us to work back for, work backwards from that stage to generate those reports using Power BI and all the powerful visuals and tools that are available within that system. And then um, being able to uh, implement Actaris as the data foundation that sits underneath Power BI and allows us to um, you know, divorce the pr outward presentation of, of reporting from the behind the scenes data collection coordination and integration and um, you know being able to use both power bi and actaris specifically for the um, the uh, their specialist subjects allows us to you know kind of um, really work well with both of those systems and get the best out of both of those systems Perfect. And I mean, Power BI can be a fairly daunting uh, and is a, is a very comprehensive system, but you still make it reasonably easy for your clients to, to get uh, the information that they need without having to be Power BI specialists. Exactly. And um, you know, that's the advantage we've had with, you know, when you bring on a large number of clients, you get to see that whilst there's a huge variety of their spreadsheet reports, fundamentally, the vast majority of them very much want the same answers in the same way. And so being able to kind of develop um, the systems with Actaris and Power BI 
that work well for one client enables us to kind of replicate those issues, replicate those kind of reports and styles out and allow us to have kind of effectively our in-house styled reports that we know you know will absolutely meet the needs of the vast majority of um, our clients with the added level of any client that wants something a bit more exotic or a bit more bespoke you know that can absolutely be built on top of um, on top of what we've existing or on top of what we've developed originally Perfect. So, so you have now more or less developed a, a best practice template for the hospitality industry where really the uh, operators get a comprehensive overview uh, on the one hand, a holistic overview where, if they have, for example, multiple restaurants to get a holistic overview of how is the overall organization going, but also holistic from uh, the different data sources that are uh, integrated. I think you're also integrating point of sale information, you're integrating the financials. Um, what are the other metrics that uh, your customers uh, can use to operate their hospitality business in a better way? Yes. Yeah, so um, you mentioned kind of the um, electronic point of sale, till systems, as well as the um, uh, accounting functions. Um, we also, you know, will integrate with um, HR and payroll systems that allows us to bring in kind of um, uh, manpower planning and, you know, items like staff turnover or, you know, kind of hours worked, which then turns into, you know, sales per hour worked or margin per hour worked. Um, we're very much um, geared towards being able to use kind of um, Actaris as the coordinator for the varying number of systems, whether it be, as I you know, mentioned, TILS, H HR systems, um, marketing systems, booking systems. And you know, we have a very kind of, um, a, our philosophy is very much, we like to work with people who like to work with the people we work with. And so, you know, kind of um, you know, our preferred partners in terms of HR and payroll or payment processing are people that we've worked with and we get, you know, we've got a great working relationship with and that we know they also work well with the other um uh, the other systems that clients use. So if a client comes to us seeking a new um, uh, till system, for example, you know, we've got you know, a, a short list of um, a few good providers that we know not only will provide them a great solution, but will also work well with the other systems they're using and this you know accounting function that we're providing for them perfect so the the customers really uh, when they work with you they get these interactive dashboards that cover the different areas uh, i guess also metrics um do you also have options to benchmark so they can benchmark uh, themselves against uh, the industry? Is it something that you're planning for the future? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we've got, um, obviously, one of the challenges we have is um, with the access to data and being able to kind of anonymize data so that um, the benchmarking can be done whilst preserving, you know, issues of confidentiality and, um, uh, you know, kind of protecting any particular client's data. But yes, you know, that's the one advantage we have in kind of having this reporting data available is we can certainly get to see that data. And even if... Um, you know, we don't necessarily plan to present or share that collated benchmark data directly with clients. It certainly allows us to use it as a basis for, you know, 
guided conversations and um uh you know kind of um advice and and suggestions for our clients thank you very much steve and with, with this new offering is this um a a new revenue streams for stream for you as well or is this something where you just improve the quality of your work um it's ac actually both of those things so um where where we're able to kind of define a fairly standard set of reports and you know that, that can be rolled out very very um quickly and efficiently um and so that you know, at one level, we can use uh, those new reports to replace kind of the old spreadsheet reporting and know that, you know, the fidelity issues and the accidental overwriting, you know, kind of are gone. Um, it does absolutely open up a revenue stream for, you know, the bespoke or more exotic reporting and, um, you know, clients that perhaps want something with you know super flashy graphics or you know amazing visuals or you know want to really pack in the um uh you know pack in the content of the reports um you know pretty much the only restriction is um you know how much can you physically squeeze onto a page and still have it readable right what I really liked about your system was also the collaborative factor that um, you, you provided your clients with the report, but you were able to add commentary to it. And I guess there's also, you know, it, it turns out to be a more relevant interaction with the customer if, if you can really point to the particular data points and, and, and interact in a likely more effective way, very clearly pointing out where, you know, our problems are rising or where are interesting things um, coming up. Absolutely. And there's, um, you, there's a very key point in that where often um, the recipients of the reports for things like the profit and loss, weekly profit and loss, um, may not see the operational comments that are coming from, you know, site managers. And for us to have built that into our reporting project definitely allows, um, you know, perhaps some of the clients who have, you know, kind of external investors, these external investors can see the report and you know they can also see specifically the um, the operators comments on what's actually happened in site that week and whether there's anything you know significant in terms of you know a massive group of you know customers have come in and held a really big party and so average spend has you know, kind of gone through the roof or you know if there's been you know something you know kind of um perhaps a bit more unfortunate at the site then you know the first question you know an external investor might have is wow these numbers look lower than last week and if they can see that, oh, yeah, actually, that's because there was an upstairs flood and we had to close the site on a Thursday, the answer, the narrative answer is already within the report to match the, um, the numerical and um, numerical numbers on the on the visuals. Brilliant. And, and how has it been received? I mean, it, it was. Uh not implemented that long ago but how, what are the what are the feedback that you're getting from your customers the feedbacks are really really good i think the um firstly i think everyone appreciates the kind of fidelity benefits from moving away from spreadsheets and um, the other kind of feedback we get that is the benefits of particularly with power bi is the report is in one place and it's always there. So it's not looking back through your emails to try and find last week's report and who sent it and where did they file it away and you know uh, those kinds of details. If you've got your Power BI login shortcut saved on your um, browser, it's just a case of clicking in there um, and accessing the report. The other um, 
really prominent feedback that we get is because the historic data is there, it's very easy to just click on the slicer and look, okay, what was last week? What was the week before that? What was last month? What was the month before that? And so that interactivity, rather than, again, you know, the historic kind of download your spreadsheet out of zero every month, um, you know, doing those sorts of comparisons is much, much harder if you're trying to track multiple spreadsheets and compare one against the other versus, you know, a Power BI date selector that allows you to pick um, either the dates that you want and for um, operators with multiple sites being able to have, you know, a version of all the sites with one specific date on and another page that flips it and says, actually, we'll have one site with all the dates on. Um, and that very you know, kind of being able to switch between those two is, um, you know, definitely something valued by our clients. Perfect. And, and was there a big learning curve um, at, the, at the clients? Did they require training or was it pretty much self-explanatory and they were able to use it uh, very quickly? Pretty much um, they're able to pick it up very, very quickly because, you know, the advantage of a lot of these reports are that, you know, it's the focus on the visual and the information that it provides. Um, you know, there's no real need for many of the clients to, you know, ever dig into how Power BI generates the reports and, you know, understanding the creation of visuals or writing DAX expressions. Um, you know, all of that is entirely invisible to the client. They just get the report that they like to see. And, um, you know, and then if they need to, they can come back to us and say, all right, yes, um, we like the week and month to date. Can we have a year to date column on? Or um, we'd like to add an alternate forecast scenario so that we can report firstly against our original forecast, but now we'd like to also report against our reforecast. And being able to build those and deploy those, you know, very, very quickly is, um, yeah, is absolutely something the clients um, don't have to worry about um, where they might have done historically in terms of, right, we need to add a new tab into a spreadsheet and then make sure all the links link to the new tab and not the old tab. So all of that kind of noise and spreadsheet construction just um, disappears. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for sharing these interesting uh, experiences. Um, so you've, you've now uh, finalized the first phase what are the the plans for the future so for us the kind of um the next phase really is to continue to uh, roll this out to as many clients as we possibly can um i think we will then have a kind of um hopefully a virtuous spiral of feedback for you know, bespoke reporting or alternate um, uh, kind of, you know, kind of alternate information. And this is one of the real advantages of rolling this out across multiple clients is that every client benefits from all the questions every other client may have asked up until that point. And also we then have the ability that, you know, the very next question that perhaps gives us a unique insight or something unique that we want to, um, you know, add to our reporting, it's then very easy to kind of replicate that back out to our existing clients and say, right, you know, um, just trying to pick an example off the top of my head, but um, we've now integrated Google reviews into reporting so we can get a feed and pick up your google reviews and you can have your scores on your relevant site pages and the real advantage of um, we find with actarius is that once you set a system up once 
it's then very easy to replicate that process for kind of every other client, um, you know, every other client onwards. Great, Steve. Thanks a lot. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, we, we hear a lot about artificial intelligence these days. What about your thoughts how this could um, assist in the accounting space as well? I think um, that's uh, I think that's a really interesting um, environment, and particularly on things like financial reporting, there's you know a number of from my own experience as kind of finance director, you know, there's a number of kind of questions and relationships that you get to understand with numbers so that, you know, uh, for a, a simple example would be, well, if sales go up, then cost of sales would normally go up in a similar proportion. Um, and, you know, and likewise, if sales really increase, um, rent and rates absolutely won't change because they're normally a very fixed cost. And so, you know, kind of having AI be able to start looking at some of those interrelationships within the data and to flag that proactively to, you know, kind of ourselves as the, you know, bookkeeping firm, um, but then also, you know, if valid onto the client to be able to say, actually, yes, you know, we've looked at this and, you know, whilst these numbers, you know, certain lines may have moved out of, you know, beyond agreed parameters, it still makes sense. Um, and that's, you know, kind of, um, I think AI will have a long way to go to replace kind of the natural instincts of senior management and how they know and understand their business. But I do feel that there are some, you know, fundamentally easy questions of just looking at, you know, something and saying, well, actually, you know, consumables costs are only ever you know, naught to 2% of turnover. And this period is 5%. So maybe we want to, you know, do a secondary review on that. Or actually, the AI driving you to be able to say, because this is so far out of boundary, here's the transaction listing drilled down for you so that you can quite easily see that, ah, yes, you know, whilst it may be high, it's genuine, it's a, you know, something genuinely unique that's driving it rather than perhaps, you know, kind of um, miscodings or, or anything else that may have crept in. Thank you so much, Steve. This was a, a really interesting um, conversation to, to hear your experiences with, with transforming your practice and, and adding these uh, very innovative new concepts uh, as, as benefits for your customers. Um, maybe as, as the final point of, of the webinar, have you got any tips for uh, peers in your profession, you know, learnings that you've had in this process that could assist them? Um, I think um, particularly uh, for, for us, one of the things that's really benefited us and myself, and I would always take this, is if you have clients, take the time to really understand their business and the drivers of their business. And that actually, if you, I feel that if you know how their business works, you and you kind of talk to them about how their business is going and that kind of ongoing communication is really important that provides an absolute kind of um, second nature check um, to you know whatever the bookkeeping out term and the reporting out term will um, will kind of show because actually you know i always regard the the reporting is merely you know it's a financial description of the events of 
the last period, the last week, the last month. And if you've ha- already had that narrative from the client, then you, you've got two points at which to say, this is what they've told me, this is what the numbers show. And if they marry, you get um, very quickly a sense of comfort with things. And if there's some discord there, then absolutely you've got some chance to, you know, further inquiries either back with the operators or back into the numbers. Cool. So the technology will definitely not replace uh, a good accountant and bookkeeper. The, it's just a, a tool that supports the interaction with your customers uh, in, in a better way? Uh, definitely. I think um, the technology, and as we mentioned earlier on, with kind of improving AI, I think there are lots of simple tests and you know more and more advanced tests that will allow um, an AI to really... Um, add value and support, not only kind of ourselves as as bookkeepers and advisors to our clients, but also kind of helping our clients as well. And I, you know, I can think of perhaps a couple of other examples where, you know, kind of broadening of AI beyond just the accounting system um, may kind of benefit things so for example you know, an AI that was able to interrogate uh, labor management hours if they can if you know an AI can see that um, you know staff hours are increasing then the AI should know to expect that the payroll numbers within the profit and loss would likely increase at a, a, a similar basis. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to hope that AI isn't going to um, get a kind of render us all obsolete too soon, but um, it's definitely a tool and definitely something that will, um, you know, kind of support us to support our clients. Perfect. Now, thank you very much, Steve, again, for, for sharing your experiences. This was uh, super interesting for me. Uh, and I guess also f- for the audience uh, to hear, you know, your journey uh, there. Um, finally, from my end, uh, I would like to invite the audience. Uh, we are working at the moment with practitioners in the accounting industry on new artificial intelligence features. So if you're interested uh, to get involved, uh, there there are some benefits uh, for you as well that you will receive uh, free support and and free services uh, also around this um, as a reward for um, helping us a little bit to improve uh, these new features. So anyone uh, that's interested, please just just, uh, contact us. And then, yeah, finally, thanks again, Steve, uh, for for taking the time and, and, and sharing your experiences today. It's been a pleasure being with you, Martin. I've really enjoyed that time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye.